keeps him ticking over nicely. Not probably should win, uh, but Ward looked very good in, and uh, yeah, he, keep, he keeps him happy at least with the pay per view money, and uh, it's still a relevant win, so we can continue to call out Wilder. Yeah. Like I'm calling out Spencer Fewin. I want you! Spencer, I want you! I want you! Who next? Who next? Who next? Who next? I got milk, baby! Who next? Who next? You with Fury were next for him, weren't he? <laughs> you, who next? You with Fury. You with Fury next, and you quit against you. You his best win on paper, that, isn't it? Um, no, it's as many heavyweight champions. Has you yeah, beat one yeah. or two? Same as Joe Joyce. How many has Joe beat one? One, yeah. Yeah, but Tyson beat Cunningham as well, didn't he? Yeah, but he was a cruiserweight champion, weren't he? Yeah, oh, you're splitting hairs today on your love for Tyson, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> what about the performance of Tony Bellew in the Sky Hot Chair? Jumping up and down like a little boy, you were like... Do you know what it reminded me of? Sport Billy! Sportsmanship! You remember that programme, Sport Billy? Where he gets his ball and he's really excited, he's like that. Sport Billy! Bell, you were like that, wasn't he? Jumping up and down like a little girl. Tony Bell, you, you should be embarrassed, he wasn't manly. It was I mean, disgusting. Eh? It was disgusting. Um, well, is it Chris Mannix that does own? He, he actually, I think around about the seventh. Supposed to what? He's supposed to be impartial. Yeah, well, he's not. Tony Bellew is not going to be impartial, is he? When Sky are paying you thousands of pounds and flying your business class to Saudi, meals on wheels, everything paid for, from you leaving your door to you getting dropped off at your door by a driver. They have people. You picked up, flown there, fed and watered and dropped off at your door and paid thousands of pounds. Do you think he's going to come out and say, well, I think Wilder's best, and I think Fury's second, I think AJ's third. He looks scared to f tonight to fight. He looks scared to throw a punch. But what they've done, you've gone from a fighter looking scared. I mean, that last 30 seconds was embarrassing, wasn't it? He's gone from a fighter being scared to death. They've spun it into a masterclass like Ali. Shades of Ali! Shades of Ali! Oh no, 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 no! Shades of Ali! Oh my god! Yeah, he, he fucking stuck the place out, didn't he, really? Stinkinator! He was the Stinkinator! Two seconds. Shout out to Gary from Worksop. Thank you very much for the uh, You Go Boss aftershave. Keep following and don't forget to share this video, Gary. But yeah, getting back to uh, getting back to what what I went on about there with uh, the, the the Tony Bell you. I mean, pff, look, it was embarrassing, wasn't it? I can't even bring myself to watch Adam Smith's interviews. Bean, run a bean, could have been, should have been, never been, magic bean. I can't even bear me to watch Adam Smith's interviews. Big Bob's Bastard Bean. Big what? Big Bob's Bastard Bean. I know, yeah. Listen, mate. Bean should be embarrassed. Do you know what Sky Sports needs, right? This is what Sky Sports needs. All the lot of them need sacking. Every single one of them needs sacking, except Carl Froch. And Andy Scott. All the rest of them, I want them gone. I want Jamie Moore, Ryan Rhodes, I want Josh Whale there. I want I want Dave Allen on there because he's not gonna go to script, is he? Do you know what I mean? And why not? He's good enough to get his brains punched in by Louis Ortiz when Joshua won't fight him. 
So I want Dave Allen as a pundit, because he's bound to say something controversial. I want them all gone. I want Nelson. I want you gone, Nelson. You're gone. You, you need to give somebody else a chance. Go, go, go ride your horses or do something constructive with your life. Steve Bunch, yeah, from Tamworth. We want Steve Bunch on. Uh, who else do we want on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that were true, though, wasn't it? You mean that he shouldn't have said it on telly, though? He got hammered for that, didn't he? Yeah, 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 he's, uh Steve Bunce is, he's not, he's not tactful, is he, but he wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he, Bunce, and he loves a night out as well, so I, I like, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Steve Bunce fan, he actually rung me up and said, I'm going to a film premiere, Porky, do you want to come with me and Jackie? I said, yeah, alright, I went and met him, and he took me to a film premiere of a film that he was in, and he had a part in the film. And uh, at the back of the, the, the cinema, it was a private screening and they had like an after party thing, you know, like cheese and, not cheese and biscuit, volivants and all that. It was quite nice, that's it. It was called Journeyman. And it, is it Paddy Constantine? It's called Journeyman. It's a really good film. And after the film finished, it were really, it has a, it's got a really tragic ending. After the film finished, uh, it went really quiet for about five, six seconds, but it sounded like a long time. I stood up, I was the first one to stand up, I started clapping like that. And then everybody stood up after that. And somebody who were with Brendan Ingle, a white-haired guy, I think it was that Carl, is it? He's got a Peugeot dealership, he's always with Kelbrook and them, isn't he, in their corner. He said to, to, he said to me, uh, well done, standing up like that. Because everybody, he, he just didn't know what to do after it filmed, you know, nobody knew what to do. A main actor were there who were in it, and I stood up and I clapped. So, if you want to watch a good film, I think you might be able to get it on YouTube, it's called Journeyman, and it's called Paddy, Paddy Summit's in it, and Steve Bunt plays himself in the film. It's a really, really good film. And I think, and don't get me wrong, but I think... The reason all the Ingle lot were there, Junior Witter, Dominic Ingle, Johnny Nelson, they were all there, Brendan Ingle. I think the reason they were all there is because he'd trained at the Ingle gym, I think, for the fight. Kid Gallard, he were there. But it were a really, really good film. And as I was walking out, because I were at the beginning, uh, sorry, I were at the front. As I'm walking out, Johnny Nelson's there and he couldn't get out of my eye line. And I stared him straight out. And do you know what, mate? He didn't want the porky smoke. Did you, Nelson? He didn't fancy the porky smoke. So, I didn't see Steffi Bull there. He didn't get an invite, mate. Probably because nobody knows him, do they, in any area. But... <laughs> but other than that, I'm alright. How are you, Dale? Anyway, you still going with that hot chick? You've got an house, haven't you now, with her? Yeah, having a bit of a nightmare with the old mortgage side of things. You're not having a nightmare waking up next to her every morning, mate, though, are you? Not stressful. <laughs> hey, you're not having a nightmare waking up next to her in the morning, are you, mate? You're punching way above your weight. It's like, it's like you're Eric Oching and you're and you and you're fighting Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> you lucky sod, mate, eh? I bet you, I bet when she goes out at night with her mates, I bet you're sweating, aren't you, Dale? <laughs> now, you're at home, aren't you, on watching Sky or surfing on your YouTube channels for boxing podcasts? <laughs> They're the ones you've got to be weary of, you know, Dale. You know when you go out with your hot chick? They don't want to be sat at home listening to boxing podcasts at night, so you've got to get a balance. Do you know what I mean? You've got to get a balance, mate. You shan't got a car, your lass, has she? Yes, yes. Oh, be careful, Dale. They've got a car, you know. It's care they can get about, you know. <laughs> I'm only pulling your leg. So what next for Joshua, then? What next, Dale? It's going to 100% pull left. 100% pull left, yeah? Yeah, he's a soft touch. He's in his 40th year. It's a knockover 
job. <coughs> it'll, be, it'll be a nice easy sell because it'll be the, the homecoming. So it'll do boys regardless. So and you think that. Put it on, they'll put it on. Uh, they'll probably put it on in London at the end of the football season. So it'll be like the last week of May, the day before the. Uh, just, just Champions the, League. The, the, yeah, they pull, the, pull the pitches up, don't they? And then they start relaying them again in like June, July. So. They have that like six week window where they can get to stadium fights on, doesn't they? So it'll probably be at the London Stadium when it the you know, the Spurs Stadium or, or rather. If it if it's the Spurs Stadium and it'll be two less. Well this is what I think it's gonna happen. Last week of May. Last week of May. Just before the Euros start as well, so just before the football starts, the Euros in June, they'll get it on there, wouldn't they? Because they won't want to go against the football world, because like, 'cause they'll think that, you know, it might not do half as many well, you still do boys, but they won't maximise every penny out of you now, didn't they? So business sense tells you it'll be the last week of May at Tottenham Stadium against Pooleth. Well, this is what I think. I, I think it's going to be Pooleth, because if you're a... You, this is what you have to do, right? This is what this is what I've always learned. Whenever I come out with stuff like this, the first thing Dennis always says, right, because he always backs Eddie Hearn, doesn't he? He's a, Dennis is an Eddie Hearn fan. He's a Bellew fan. All them people that I'm not a fan of, Dennis is a fan of. He'll say, listen, you've got to put your promoter's hat on and look at it for it like this. Who is the hardest mandatory for Joshua out of Usek or Pulev? Pulev's going to be in his 40th year, Usek's Joshua's age. So it's going to be a man, what, eight, eight to ten year, eight, nine, ten year younger, We a gold medal from heavyweight Olympics, same year as Joshua, that he won the super heavyweight gold, and he's won the WBSS, he's undefeated, he ice bell you, he's just ran through that tournament and dealt with everybody. Do they fight him, a technician southpaw, who beat Baturbia, as well in amateurs, or do they fight Pulef, the boomtown rat? Who does he fight? Pool left's the easier one, so he, so he lets the WBO belt go, but in letting it go, it's going to go to two matchroom fighters, either Usek against, the, he'll try and get a matchroom fighter in for that. Now Frank Warren, the only person he's got that can upset the apple cart with the WBO is Daniel Dubois, but they're not going to risk Dubois with a technician, are they? Southpaw as well. Exactly. So they'll keep the belt in matchroom, or if Usek can fight somebody else and it's not a matchroom fighter, Eddie Hearn will try his best to get options on that fighter. But Frank Warren's also going to be trying to do the same thing because he wants a slice of pie as well, you know. He wants a slice. Eh? Hey? In in America, in America, because it's going to go to a purse bid. No, they'll bring him home. They'll bring him home. What homecoming? homecoming. The homecoming. Yeah. The homecoming. The homecoming. Not the fucking homecoming. White against Povetkin, Chisora against Usyk, Parker against Hunter, and Wilder will fight Ruiz. And what about Yui? Yui Fury, where's he fit into all this? You can't say that about Yui. He's, he's going to let his hand go in next fight. Fight Dubois then? Yeah, he's not going to fight Dubois, is he? Because he won't want to work with Warren. Him against Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce beats Hulk for the European title. Joe Joyce is a BT fighter. Yui's a Sky Sports fighter, isn't he? Yeah, fair point. But to be fair, I don't know. Joe Joyce is 34, isn't he, when he next fights? Did Joe Joyce, David Price, Joe Joyce and David Price, were they in the same Olympic trials for 2008? Are they the no, same age? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I think weren't Joyce's 2012 and 2016? Yeah, but were Joe Joyce in the 2012 Olympics? Mm. David Price went to Beijing in 08, didn't he? Yeah. 11 years ago. 
So, I don't know, but... You see, this is another thing as well, right? The Olympics is next summer, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know that Fraser Clark? He's been up at that GB team, right? Fla Fraser Clark. He's been in the Olympic team for nearly... He's been there since 2009, has he? 2010. He's been there nine years, hasn't he, Fraser Clark, and he's still not turned pro. What's all that about? Where's he going? When's he turning pro? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, Who knows he's had offers and that, but I, I want to see him turn pro because I think his story is quite interesting how he works for Clifton Mitchell as a, door, as a, a security guy on Eddie Hearn's shows and blah, 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 oh, he used to do. But I, I want to see him. He's got medals. He's got. He's a decorated amateur. I want. I want to follow him. I want somebody different to follow. Who's a heavyweight? Not Joshua. Not Joyce. And I. I, I don't. To, to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna. I'll, I'll watch you if you're his fights, but I'm not gonna watch him as intently now as I as I should have done because as I should do because even though I know him and his dad well, I think. It's sort of run its course now, hasn't it, Yui? Is that does that sound harsh? Do you think Yui's missed the boat? Bad turnings at wrong time. I don't know because I just think that obviously if he'd, if he'd have won the pool left fight, he'd have got Joshua. Yeah, but he should have pulled out of the pool left fight. Dennis could have sorted it. Yeah, well, so what? You you don't win to a fight if you're not hundred percent of that magnitude, and even if he'd have beat pool F. He still wouldn't have got the fight with Joshua because look at all the traffic in front of that. I mean, Yui Fury fought in September 2018 against Pulev. Now, the Pulev fight's not going to come round now until June. So it would have took him 21 months anyway. So Yui could have slipped on a banana skin in that time, couldn't it? So I, I believe all these, all these people, right, trying to map out the careers around mandatories in oh I'm going to have a mandatory in about 13 months Dillian White's talking about mandatory in April 2021 we're still in 2019 so what does that mean that Dillian White say I'm going to fight Wilder in Easter 2021 well we're, we're, what two years later you can't do that you've got to take out each fight as it comes hey Yeah, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it, mate. I, I just want to—I just want to finish off on what you felt about the show as a whole. As a whole, what would you give it out of ten as a paying customer, paying twenty-five quid? A three. A three out of ten. What do you think to Joshua's performance? Was it a masterclass? No, I don't think so. I think it was a fight of very low on confidence, not not looking to engage at any point. What do you think to the last 30 seconds of round 12? Absolutely embarrassing. It was, wasn't it? He was frightened true to... True Warriors, going back, true Warriors, even fighters that know when they've got the job done, have gone in there and stuck it all on the line. Look at Frotch against Kessler in the second fight. Frotch knew he'd got that fight in the bag. Yeah. He was still going for that knockout. You know that, don't you? Team Frotch! Well, I'm not calling Frotch his biggest fan. I know. But Do you think that Anthony Joshua's confidence has shot to bits? 100%. Do you think they will fight Wilder? Oh, it won't happen next year, so if he's still got the belts from the end of next year, I think they possibly might then. Do you think they'll fight Usek? Eddie Hearn said today that they're going to fight Pulev and then Usek. Yeah. They don't want the Usek smoke, do they? He's not going to get beat by Chisora, but they might give him a difficult matchup in the summer of next year. You know, just a bit of a tester. Soften him up a little bit for AJ, because that's a flip of a coin in it, that fight. Usyk, 
Although he, you know, he doesn't command respect with his power as such. You know, he's not going to ice you in one. But he, he might have enough to put Joshua away. Oh, sec! I've never seen him in trouble in a fight, me, have you? No, I think he boxed rings around Joshua, actually. I've never seen Usyk in trouble. And do you, do you think, I mean... Johnny Nelson, right, said something in an article I read the other day where he watched Usyk do six rounds with Vladimir Klitschko and he's turned around, this is up in Alps, and he said, who's that guy there? And they said, that's Alexander Usyk, uh, he's, he's going he's gonna to win a gold medal in, he'll win a gold medal in London. And that were ages ago. Now, can you imagine how much better he's come on since? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's a southpaw as well, he's a technician and listen, when you're at that level, you can punch. You might not be an ice man like Wilder, but we can't keep comparing people's power to Wilder. Luis Ortiz is an older version of Usek and Joshua doesn't want to go near him. And he's nine years older than Usek Ortiz, so if Joshua doesn't want the Ortiz smoke, he's definitely not going to want Usek. Now everybody kept saying, Usyk and Joshua is going to be a massive fight in pros because one had an heavyweight gold and one had a super heavyweight gold from the same Olympics. And Joshua even went to watch his fights in the Olympics because he said he remembers Usyk going into the like the calves and that around where the, the place were and he were always with Lomachenko. Do you know what I mean? And he's in that bracket, isn't he, Usyk? You know, with Lomachenko. Hey. Yeah, and, and is Lomachenko a southpaw as well? Lomachenko is anything he fucking wants to be. To be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. He's, if Lomachenko wants to be an heavyweight, he'd beat Joshua, wouldn't he? <laughs> so, but other than that, I'm all right. Is there anything that you've uh, you want to finish off on, Dale? Before I let you uh, go play with your honey. <laughs> All right then, well listen, keep in touch Dale, and this will be up tomorrow at 6 o'clock. We've got time to promote it then, haven't we? So, all right mate, well listen, it's been great talking to you, and I'll speak to you soon, and uh, all the best to you and your family, my friend. And you, mate. You take care, pal. Bye. That was Dale Nichols, my good friend from the black country. Black country as in... The uh, Wolverhampton Wolver Wanderers. From Wolf. He's a he's a Wolverhampton Wanderers fan. I didn't mean that as in the black country where there's a lot of black people there because people tend to turn everything into PC, don't they? Political correctness and uh, blah de blah. But uh, oh, I've got a missed call from me mate Paul in Leeds. Hope you're all right, Paul. I'll call you back in a bit. Uh, oh, here we are. Two seconds. Uh, oh, it's so it's so, mate. He went yesterday. I did. I did text you. I did text you. Check your. Sorry, no, I emailed you. Yeah, it's gone, mate. So, all right. Uh, I think that's about it, really. We've covered everything. I like to do a. I like to do a blast with uh, Dale. Uh, if anybody's got a problem about anything that we've just spoke about, uh, just email me and I'll give you a reply, but I don't really give an F-U-C-K. So, cause it's my channel, I can say what I want on this channel. So, all you gimps who keep sending me abuse, keep watching. Alright, I think that's about it. I'm... Uh, I've been to look at a car this morning, and my mate says, yeah, it's only got a bit of panel damage on it. Bit of panel damage, 17 plate Fiesta. I thought, that's cheap, 1,900 quid. Yeah, well, it had been rolled. Bit of panel damage, but what can you do? He's from Stain for Finney. I think the car dealer's down there, but they don't know what they're on with. But I think that's about it, really. We've covered everything, uh, onwards and upwards. Mickey's show tomorrow night. So if I'm going to be filming at Mick's show tomorrow, 
it's no good me putting this out at 6 p.m. on Friday, is it? Because it's going to be, how can I can explain it? I'll not be there to answer the live chat. So, if I'm not going to be getting in while late. So, when's the best time to put this video out tomorrow? I'm going to put this out tomorrow afternoon. I'll put this out 3 p.m. till 5, then we can all interact, can't we? So, don't forget, all you, uh, all you haters, keep them keep them uh, questions coming because when you leave a question it gives me a good average on me uh, engagements whether you say good things or bad things it's as good as a like if you comment it's as good as ticking I like it so and if you need to check what I've just set up to see if it's true go on to the Google Analytics and it tells you how it all works so keep them comments coming I didn't know this till yesterday but Keep them coming, as many bad as you can, it just makes me look better and YouTube get the channel out there because the channel's growing, isn't it? We started with zero followers and we've got 2,400 now, 2.4K. All right, so keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Shout out to AJ Hobson at Innovation Alloys and shout out to Kevin Hall at South Yorkshire Packaging Services. Our two backers, the back in the channel, they are Porky's Corner till the D-I-E. Alright, so peace out. I'm now going to go out in my Merc and I'm going to cruise. We're going to have some lunch, alright? Peace out. Oh, and a shout out to... Uh, my friend who's in Devon who's not very well. I hope you're well, mate. Keep your chin up. Cancer's awful, but... I hope this video has cheered you up, mate. All the best.